The first step is stand guard the door of your mind. And I got that from my teacher, Jim Rohn. I remember he came to me one day and I was really frustrated. I was saying, you know, I'm just, I'm working so hard and nothing's really working and I don't understand it. And, and I was just, I was super frustrated. And remember he came to me and he said, Tony, he said, listen to me. He said, think of, tell me who's, what are you reading? He said, tell me who you're talking to. He said, tell me who you're surrounding yourself with. And I said, well, I'm mostly isolated by myself. And I said, but I'm so frustrated. He says, listen to me. He said, answer this question for me. He said, what happens in the world if let's say, you know, your worst enemy comes by and drops sugar in your coffee? And I'm, I said, well, you'd have sweet coffee. He said, well, what if your best friend, even by accident, drops one drop of strychnine? What if it's your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, somebody you love, accidentally drops one drop of strychnine? I said, well, then you'd be dead. He goes, that's right. So remember, life is both sugar and strychnine, so watch your coffee. And what he really meant was stand guard at the door of your mind. Because today, we live in a world where the media, they're not bad people, they're good people, but they're companies. And they got to take care of their shareholders. And the only way they win is by getting your eyeballs. And the only way they get your eyeballs in a world where there's so much information is to startle you. The news is not designed to educate you, inform you. You know that. That's why it says water, drinking water may kill you, film at 11, you know, anything that grabs you. And so we're living in a culture of so much fear. So if you're going to take your life back, you got to take into a limited amount of that media and, and be able to pursue it, not let it pursue you. Today, most people, like in order to get your attention, we all know what they do, it's called clickbait. Let me create a headline that'll grab you. It doesn't matter if the content is even real news or not. A lot of times the headline isn't really what the whole story is, but it pulls you in. There's whole groups of people whose entire life is designing algorithms and language to make you stay online more so they can make more money, but it isn't necessarily to your advantage. So what Jim Rohn used to say to me is he said, Tony, this is your new daily practice. Cause this is what I really want to get to you guys here is if you want to keep momentum, if you've joined me for those few days there, the five, six days or seven, I guess we did for the challenge or you went immersion with me as well. The key is to get momentum and keep momentum. If you work your tail off to get momentum going and then you drop it, oh my God, you got to start all over again. And so the way you do that is you have a daily practice. It's not like, you know, years ago, I went to a seminar by Jim Rohn and then my life was perfect. It's like I kept immersing myself in all these things, but I also made sure each day I was making some form of progress. And if you want to know what makes people happy, write down progress equals happiness. Think about it. You can achieve everything in the world and still go, is this all there is? You can achieve something and be excited, but for how long? The only way you stay happy and excited is to keep growing. Progress is everything. If you're making progress on your body, progress in your mind, progress in your motion, you're going to feel happy. When you get there, you feel excited. But again, for how long? A year? No. Six months? Three months? Three weeks? Three days? Three hours? Because we're not made to just sit and, you know, be successful. We're made to grow. We're made to, then as we grow, we have something to give. So step one is, let's see if you can put a little system of standing guard at your mind. And Jim Rohn said to me back then, the number one thing you have to do is read 30 minutes a day. So never less than 20 minutes. And I'm not talking about what comes to your phone. I'm not talking about clickbait. I mean a book. I mean something that you pursue. Great ideas are never going to interrupt you. They have to be pursued. And you're, if you don't pursue them, you're going to get what everybody else has, which is all this fear, all this uncertainty, all this stuff that won't work because everybody's focused on what won't work, what can't happen. Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid to fail. They're afraid to try and feel like they're not enough. So you got to stand guard of that mind by feeding your mind. You know, Jim Rohn used to say to me, success leaves clues. If you want things to get better, you got to get better. If you want things to change, you got to change. But you got to do it deliberately and consciously. And he used to say to me constantly, he said, Tony, you've got to constantly find a way to feed that mind, something that's got strategy in it, philosophy, something that's going to improve the quality of your life. And if you really learn it, you can help the people you love with the things you learn. And so I got hooked. And so I decided I'm going to read a book a day. <laughs> I took a speed reading course and I didn't read a book a day, but I read 700 books over the period of seven years, all in the area of philosophy, physiology, emotion, the things to me that mattered most. And what I really try to do is each day try to use something I learned, not just read, not just let my learning lead to knowledge. You know, Jim used to say, if you let your learning lead to knowledge, you become a fool. If you let your learning lead to action, that's when your life changes. So I started being aware of who was saying what, what I was taking in. You know, Jim used to say, you know, success leaves clues. If someone's successful, they're not lucky. They're doing something different than you. Figure out what they're doing different. And he said, the first thing is find out what they're reading. 
He said, because he said, I remember he said to me something funny. He said, find out what poor people read and don't read it. And when he said poor, he didn't just mean financially poor. He meant people that were unhappy, people that were had no sense of meaning in their life, people that were financially strapped because they weren't managing to add value to other people, people that found themselves not taking care of their relationships, their body. Poor isn't just money. Wealth isn't just money. It's emotional, spiritual, everything. He said, so find out what successful people do, what wealthy people read, what happy people read, and read that. Feed your mind. So step number one is every single day, you got to do something and feed your mind. And if you do that, if you just made that habit, say even five days a week, I swear to you, it'll change your life. But again, not what comes to you, what you pursue, something that has real value, a strategy that can change the game for your business, your life, a philosophy that can make you more fulfilled or happy, a way to make a difference for the people you love. That's a daily sought out practice for me. Started when I was 17, I'm now 61. That's why I have the privilege to be able to work with so many people. But most importantly, I've applied these things to me. So I have the life that I want. I don't have a life that I'm promoting to other people.